Hello, my friends! Welcome to more tutoring sessions with me, Arthur. This is the May 2017 exam, and we are doing the non calculator section, so let's rock and roll. Number one, in the xy plane, what is the y intercept of the line with the equation y equals 4x minus 1? Well, the y intercept is simply the number that's by itself, it's not next to the variable, it's where x equals 0. In this scenario, it would just be negative 1. D. Number two, for the function f above, what is the value of f of 7 minus f of 5? Okay, so to do this, we need to calculate f of 7 and calculate f of 5 and then subtract f of 5 from f of 7. So let's see, f of 7 is 7 plus 3 over 2, which just becomes 5. f of 5 is just 5 plus 3 over 2, which becomes 4. 5 minus 4 is 1, so our answer is B. Number 3, if xy is a solution to the system of equations above, what is the value of y? Okay, so with all systems of equations, we can solve one equation for one variable and just plug it into the other equation. Uh, let's start with the second equation, x over 2 equals 3, which means that x equals 6. So if we plug in 6 for x in the first equation, we're go going to get 3 times 6 plus y equals 12. So 8, distribute this out, 18 plus 3y equals 12. 3y equals negative 6, y equals negative 2, our answer is B. Number 4. In economics, the equilibrium price is defined as the price at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal if the quantity demanded D and the quantity supplied S in terms of the price in dollars P are given by the equations above. What is the equilibrium price? Well, they basically just told us it's where they're equal, right? So we're going to set these equations equal to each other. Uh, so D equals S, which means that 60 minus 3 over 4P equals 1 over 4P. Let's add 3 fourths P to both sides. 60 equals P. So our answer is going to be B, 60. Number five, if x minus two squared minus six minus two plus nine equals zero, what is the value of x? Okay, so in order to figure out the value of x, we could do two things. We could either plug the answer choices in, or we could uh, foil out the x minus two squared. Uh, let's foil out the x minus two squared. So x minus two squared, is, and do the rest of the equation, obviously x minus 2 squared is going to get us, uh, so this will be, let's see, x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus, and then I'll distribute the 6x minus 2, so this will be minus 6x uh, plus 12 plus 9 equals 0. So this becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 6x plus 21 equals 0. Uh, combine like terms, x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Uh, let's write some more stuff up here. If we factor out x squared minus 10x plus 25, we're going to get uh, x minus 5 times x minus 5 equals 0. So x equals 5. So C is our answer. Number 6. A chef plans to cook a maximum of 100 entrees for a dinner party. Each entree will include either chicken or fish. The cost of ingredients for each chicken entree is 7 bucks, and the cost of ingredients for each fish entree is 9 bucks. If no more than 850 bucks can be spent on the ingredients for the entrees, and chef cooks C chicken entrees in F fish entrees, which of the following systems of equations uh, best represents the constraints on C and F? So we know that there's a total of 100 entrees, right? 
So if C is going to be the number of uh, chicken entrees and F is the number of fish entrees, we know right off the bat that C plus F has to be less than or equal to 100 since, it, we, since they told us there's only a maximum of 100 entrees. So right off the bat, we know A can't be the answer, and so we're left with, uh, and we know that D can't be an the answer because we could have fewer than 100 entrees. Next, um, they told us no more than 850 bucks can be spent, so the second inequality must be less than or great, uh, less than or equal to 850. So the answer choice that gives us that is C. Whoops. Okay. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, if x plus 3 equals 13 and x minus y equals 2, what is the value of x squared minus y squared? Okay. So to figure this out, we need to get the values of x and y. Oh, isn't... Those are some lovely sirens. Some beautiful sirens. Anyway, that's one way to do it. We can get the values of x and y. Um, but... An easier way to do this, honestly, would just be to multiply these out. The reason is because when you multiply x plus y times x minus y, this actually ends up simplifying. When we fold this out, we end up getting x squared uh, minus xy plus xy minus y squared. So the xy's cancel out, and this leaves us with x squared minus y squared. So, if we were to multiply these out, since we know that x plus y is 13 and x minus y equals 2, we can just multiply 13 and 2, which gives us 26. Because 13 times 2 will give us the same answer as x plus y times x minus y, which gives us x squared minus y squared. Otherwise, solve it like a system of equations. You can solve one variable for x, plug it into the other equation, get the y variable, then you'll have your x squared and your y squared, and plug them into x squared minus y squared. Okay, every Saturday, Bob makes loaves of bread to sell at the farmer's market. I like to try some of Bob's breads. Each loaf costs him a buck to make. He sells each one for three bucks. He pays the vendor's fee of 75 bucks every Saturday to set up his booth. What is the least number of loaves of bread he needs to sell to cover the cost of the vendor's fee? So, in other words, we need to cover the $75, right? Well, if each loaf costs a buck to make and he sells them at three bucks each, that means he makes a profit of $2 for every loaf. So, we can just divide 75 by 2. And this is going to get us 37.5. So, which means that he needs to sell 38 to cover his cost. Okay, number nine. In the right triangle above, the tangent of angle A is 4 over 3. What is the sine of angle B? So, the way you calculate sine is, remember, we use SOKATOA. SOKATOA. So, sine of an angle let's say sine of angle B, is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, AC is the opposite side, 25 is a hypotenuse. So we need to figure out what is going to be the measure of that opposite side. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. Um, actually, we can use a lot of things to figure this out, but ultimately we need that opposite side regardless. So if we use the Pythagorean theorem to figure this out, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this means that ac squared plus 20 squared is going to give us uh, 25 squared. So ac squared plus 400 will give us, um, we need to figure out what 25 times 25 is. So 25 times 25 is... 5, carry the 2, 10, 12, um, same, th uh, 5, get rid of this, 10, carry the 1, 4, 5, so that's going to be 625. 
So AC squared is going to equal 225. So AC equals the square root of that, which is 15. So this is going to be 15. Sine's opposite of a hypotenuse, so it's 15 over uh, 25. Divide them by both by 5, and you get 3 over 5. And that's one way to solve it. There's, there's a few ways to solve this question. On uh, number 10, in the equation above, wx and z are each greater than 1, which of the following is equivalent to y? Okay, so we want to, so let's get all the y's together. W, X, Y plus, let me put it down here instead. So W, X, Y plus X, Y, Z uh, minus Y, Z equals W, X. Okay, pretty good. Uh, we can factor a Y out of everything. So Y times W, X plus x z minus z equals w x and then if we now just divide both sides by w x plus x z minus z isolating for y we end up getting d as our answer number 11 the pressure exerted on an object under water increases by one atmosphere every 33 feet below the surface of the water at sea level the pressure is one atmosphere which equation gives the total pressure in atmospheres exerted on an underwater object at a depth of f feet below sea level? Well, let's see. Firstly, we know that at sea level, the pressure is at one atmosphere. In other words, when f is zero, uh, we start at our y intercept is going to be one. So we know a and b can't be our answer. Uh, now we know it increases by one every 33 feet below the surface of the water. So in other words, when we increase F by 33, the pressure needs to increase by 1. Um, the only answer choice that does this is D. Number 12, which of the following equations has a graph in the XY plane with no X intercepts? Okay. Well, uh, in other words, which of these graphs has no which of these equations has no solutions if you set them equal to zero? Uh, so let's basically what's unfactorable. Uh, let's start with some easy ones. Well, uh, C clearly can't work, right? Because if C if x is zero, then y is going to be zero. So right, so that has x intercepts. Um, D is a linear function, starts with negative five. Linear functions will basically always have an x-intercept unless it's a horizontal line, but this isn't the case here because the slope isn't zero. Uh, so now we're left with a and b. Well, b is a pretty common equation that it's factorable, right? So with b, whoops, because b factors into uh, x minus 2 times x plus minus 3. So that, uh, oops, nope, sorry, sorry. B factors into, uh, let's see, x minus 6 times x plus 1. So this has x intercepts, so by definition, it has to be a. And it kind of makes sense because a is unfactorable, and if you try plugging it into the quadratic equation, that won't work either. 13, what is the y coordinate of the point of intersection in the graphs of? of the equations above okay so point of intersections where they cross so we need to set these mother cluckers equal to each other so we're gonna get uh let's see if we set them equal to each other x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 5x plus 1 solve it get it all together x squared uh minus 2x plus plus 1 equals 0. Factor this. x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0, which means 1 is a solution. Done. So, which of the fo number 14? Which of the following expressions is equivalent to 16x squared raised to the 1 half power? So, rules of exponents here. We need to apply the exponent to everything. So, a 1 half exponent just is the same thing as, as taking the square root of number. 
So firstly, we take the square root of the 16, so we're left with 4. So basically, that basically eliminates everything else. Now with the exponent, if other than a, I mean. Now with the exponent, if you raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply them. You multiply the, um, the exponents. So this would be the same thing as, so if you raise x squared to the 1 half, it's the same thing as multiplying 2 by 1 half and then raising x to that value. 2 times 1 half is 1, x raised to the 1 is just x. So, and square root of 16 is 4, so your answer is A. Number 15, in the e figure above, BC is 5, so we're going to label this as 5. The length of segment AD is half the length of CD. What is the le length of segment DE? Well, if the length of segment AD is half the, legment, the length of segment CD, that means AD is a third of AC. Make sense? Right? Because if it's one half of DC, that means together it, it only gives one third of the whole thing. So this means, right, in triangles, sides are always in proportion to each other. So if AD is a third of AC, that means ED is a third of five. A third of five is the same thing as five over three, so C is our answer. And now on to the griddens, my friends. That was quick, right? Not so bad. This test is not that horrific. I mean, it's a little horrific, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Number 16, in the equations A equals X minus 4 and B equals uh, X plus 4, A and B are constants, where when the product of A, B is written in the form X squared minus C and C is a constant, what is the value of C? So let's get X squared minus C. We had a similar question earlier, remember? So in order to get x squared, so what we can do is multiply x minus 4 by x plus 4. So we're and this is going to end up getting us x squared minus 16 because the middle terms cancel out, which means that c equals 16. Isabella only sells rings and necklaces on her website. Rings are 50 bucks, necklaces are 30 bucks. She sold 25 pieces of jewelry. Her sales totaled. 1050 how many necklaces does Isabella sell again kind of similar to a question we had done earlier so um she told she sold 25 pieces of jewelry right which means that the number of rings whoops it's the number of ring oh why is it not writing this is odd is it gonna, are you gonna write now no right oh there we go now it's writing great so this means that r plus n is gonna be 25 and the way we get the total price is we multiply 50 by R and add uh, 30 times N. And this is going to get us 1050. So now all we got to do is uh, how many necklaces did she sell? So we know that uh, from here that R is going to be 25 minus N. So we can just substitute that into the second equation. So 50 times 25 minus n plus 30n equals 1050. Uh, cool beans. And when we do this, distribute it all out and solve for n, n should end up being 10. Number 18. 1.2 times h plus 2 equals 2h minus 1.2. What value of h is the solution to the equation above? Well, let's just do it out. Distribute out the left side. 1.2h plus 2.4 equals 2h minus 1.2. Uh, combine some like terms. 3.6 equals, let's see, uh, 0.8h. Divide both sides by 0.8, h is going to be 4.5. Number 19, if r is greater than 0 and the cube root of 9 r or 2 equals 1 half r, what is the value of r? Okay, beautiful. So, we're solving, let's, you know, if we have a cube root, let's cube everything. So, if we cube the left side, we'll get 9 r over 2. If we cube the right side, remember, cube everything. So this would be 
1 over 8 times r cubed. Because 1 half times 1 half times 1 half is 1 eighth, r times r times r is r cubed. Um, so if we, have a, if we have an r on the left side and r cubed on the right side, we can cross off this r, and this becomes a 2. We just basically divided both sides by r. So at this point, 9 over 2 equals uh, r squared over 8. So if we cross multiply, 2r squared equals uh, 72. Divide both sides by 2, r squared equals 36. So r equals 6. Whoops. And finally, the last question, number 20, the moment we've all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. In the figure above, the circle has center A in line segment C, B is tangent to the circle at point C, so which means it forms a 90 degree angle there. So we have a right triangle here. If A, B equals 1 and C, B equals 0. 0.8, what is the length of the diameter of the circle? So this is uh, 0. 0.8. AB is 1, so we can calculate AC. Um, again, so we can do this in a few ways. Um, one way, so if we want the diameter of the circle, we first need the radius. So we need to figure out what, what is AC. And then once we figured out AC, we can double it. So we can do the Pythagorean theorem again. Or we could also recognize that this is a Pythagorean triple, right? Because if this is 1, if that's 0. 0.8, then this is, AC would be 0. 0.6, because this would be a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Um, and any multiples of 3, 4, 5 also correspond to this rule. So since 1 and 0. 0.8 are multiples of it, that means AC also must be a multiple of it. So AC can be 0. 0.6. Otherwise, just Pythag you could Pythagorean theorem it instead. You could do uh, AC squared plus 0.8 squared equals 1 squared, right? And if you did it this way, you would end up getting AC equals 0. 0.6 anyway. So if AC is 0. 0.6, that means the diameter is double that. So the diameter equals 1.246 over 5. Cool, that's it. Not so bad, right? That was the non-calc section of this test. Uh, please check it when I'll upload the video for the calc section shortly. You can check it out. And until next time, adios.